that's a lot of cooling power and even more RGB. It's just the way it goes nowadays. It just comes naturally. It's basically the law. <laughs> Couldn't keep my face straight for this one. Hi guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to my channel. Just after I had a chance to take a closer look at Fractal Celsius S36 all-in-one water cooler that was in combination with their Vector RS chassis, feel free to check that one out. I will put a link to it in the right top corner of this video. I already got my hands on its sort of like a successor, the Celsius Plus Prisma. And since I both have the 240 and 360 mm versions of them, why not compare them? It seems like they are coming as a spin-off of their original brother, but as you'll now see, it's far from that. Compared to the regular Celsius series, the CPU block on the Celsius Plus is bigger, in particular taller, although the block is smaller in diameter. I assume it's a bit taller due to housing RGB LEDs and additional hardware for that addressable RGB hub and fan control, while the pump itself by the specification seems to be more or less the same, it's probably a newer Azitec solution in question. Its housing also received this rubberized matte finish, which in my opinion looks really nice, while the top of it is almost mirror-like glossy, basically a fingerprint scanner, carrying Fractal's logo and a thin RGB LED ring which surrounds it and goes around the outer edge of the block. That ring seems to carry a total of 6 RGB LEDs, they are not that distinguishable unless you take a better look at them, so yes, it will give you that uniform and evenly dispersed look. Too bad they didn't decide to light up the logo with RGB LEDs also, but rather with a white one, but I must admit it looks pretty clean like this, so I don't mind it. We again have the option to manually choose between the auto and PWM mode just by rotating the outer ring, which is now a bit more easy to turn, and it also lights up when you change its position. Beside the pump, this will also control the cooler's fans if you decide to use the fan hub on the radiator itself, so the pump speed and the fan speed will be in sync in terms of the voltage they are receiving, so let's say if a pump is running at 60%, the fans will run at 60% too, which for some users won't be appealing since they would like to control the fan and the pump speed separately from each other, so they can achieve that balance of optimum noise level and performance. The connector hub which the radiator carries also received an update, now it houses an addressable RGB connector for the fans, and it's also sent through the sleeving of the other tube to the CPU block, which is why we now have this other added connector on the block with its own cable, and that one you just hook up to an addressable RGB header on the motherboard and control everything over it with whatever software utility comes with your motherboard, depending on its manufacturer. For example, in the case of my MSI's X570 motherboard, that was their Mystic Light utility. Unfortunately, the fan cable again is not long enough for it to reach the hub from the bottom radiator position. I don't know how they missed that one again, plus it can get a bit messy daisy chaining their addressable RGB cables, although you will have enough length to reach the addressable RGB connector on the hub. Thankfully, all of the cables are nicely sleeved from one end to another, I really don't have any complaints about that, except again that ones for the fans are a bit too short. Speaking of the fans, these ones are coming as a completely new add-on for this series, they are what make this AIO additionally pop out. Those are of course the Prisma RGB fans which go along with the also RGB lit CPU block, and what's also interesting is that you don't have to choose them, you can also go for the non-RGB option called the Celsius Plus Dynamic instead of Prisma. Although, if you wish to have the highest static pressure, which is desirable when it comes to radiators, you should go for the Prisma version since it has around 20% more of it, with basically the same airflow and noise level. So the Celsius Plus model and the AIO stands on its own, while you have an option to choose different fans. Last but not the least, the price gap between these two versions range from $20 to $30 in benefit of the dynamic model. The radiator size offering has been expanded, now we have a 280mm version, so that's with the 2x140mm fan configuration, alongside of the 240 and 360mm version which I have here with me. We seem to have the same fin density and 30mm of thickness, the only thing that's different is that these ones are not using the G-quarter fittings, so you won't be able to expand the loop, which is a bit disappointing. 
The installation process is identical to its predecessor, so is the socket support. It can go on basically anything. Bottom line, it was as simple and straightforward as it can be, especially in case of AMD's platform, which I used for my testing. You just need to change the bracket on the CPU block, put this little hook on the other hand, latch it onto the existing stock cooler bracket, tighten it down, and that's it. The tubing is long enough for it to be put on the front of the chassis, 400 millimeters to be precise, and at the same time it provides enough rigidity and flexibility to be put in its place, while its joints are rotatable. For the purpose of this testing, I've used a chassis that has a big mesh front panel, so I can provide it with enough airflow and have optimal testing conditions when it comes to, so to speak, real life scenario. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because soon I'm going to release my review of this very interesting and affordable Silentium PC chassis. They are really hitting the right spots with this one. And yes, it comes with tempered glass side panel, and this particular one has an added feature of my fingerprint smudges. But for this particular case, I removed it so you can see the water cooler in its full RGB glory. For the CPU, I've used AMD's Ryzen 7 3700X strapped onto MSI's X570 MPG Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard. Both the S36 and S24 radiators were mounted on the front of the chassis during their testing, and besides their fans, I put another Prisma 120mm fan on the back of the chassis, serving as an exhaust. Finally, I've used AIDA's 64 system stability test to bring the heat up, so I can clearly see how these all-in-one water coolers perform. They were both able to keep the CPU temperature below 80 degrees Celsius, which is what I usually see when I put a water cooler on this particular model of the CPU. If you compare the 240 and 360 mm Celsius plus Prisma models directly, the difference is definitely there. At stock values, the 360 mm version takes a win with around 3 degrees Celsius of advantage, but once we bump that up to higher values, albeit the Ryzen 7 3700X doesn't have a high declared TDP, but when overclocked it can push some heat out due to the fact it has 8 cores and 16 threads, the difference basically tapers off to a point where they perform very similar to each other. In that case, the 240mm model even performed better compared to the 360mm one, but I assume that's probably due to a bit different pump or fan speed at that moment, and my theory about that is confirmed when you compare their results at full fan speed, where the 360mm model again had better results. As you've probably noticed by looking at the results, the auto mode wasn't able to sustain the CPU temperature when it was overclocked, to a point it would trigger a thermal trip where the whole system just restarts in order to prevent damaging the CPU due to extremely high temperature. Although both coolers could clearly handle that kind of overclocking based on what I saw when you use PWN control, and when you leave it to the motherboard's fan profile or do a fan curve on your own, it seems like the auto mode wasn't set up in a way that it would react that fast to a CPU temperature change, as they are probably using a thermal probe within the loop itself, measuring the temperature of the coolant, and it tends to heat up slower, giving more time for the CPU to heat up further before the cooler reacts on that. On the other hand, I did like how the auto mode silently operated both the fans and the block pump, it was whisper quiet both during idle and load, but of course that had consequences, higher CPU temperature and a bit lower boost clocks. Although I approve near silent operation, it's clear that they need to work on that ramping curve, it needs to respond a bit quicker and maybe overall make the fans and pump work 10 to 20% faster, just to additionally ensure a bit lower temperatures. Other than that, the fans are audible above 1500 RPM, which, when it comes to PWN control and the default motherboard's fan profile, will be surpassed in the case of Ryzen 7 3700X, as it tends to reach higher temperatures, so the BIOS tries to compensate that with higher fan speeds, making the fans run close to its full speed in almost every cooler testing that I've so far done with it. In this particular case, as in pretty much all of them, when the fans are running close to their maximal speed, that was unbearably loud for me. Based on what I saw with the auto mode, the best thing would be for you to find some middle ground with manually setting the fan profile and pump speed, as this will result in good cooling performance and quiet operation. The pump itself is not loud, I was actually quite surprised with its noise levels. This might be the one I approve in terms of that, 
but just maybe, as I'm a bit of a noise freak when it comes to rattling and high pitched sounds, I would have to try it on a longer term basis. Here is a short sound clip of the AIOs with the CPU being under full load, while also showing you the sound meter for a measurement comparison. During this noise testing the back fan was turned off while the GPU was idling, so its fan stop technology kicked in, so you will only hear the pump and the radiator pants, just so you can get a better comparison on how loud only they are in a chassis, or to be more precise the whole AIO as a solution. The price difference between these two particular models is a pretty hefty one, around $50, which will make you think twice considering that both of them do more than a good job with a mainstream level CPU like this one, so the question of value for your money imposes naturally, especially when comparing them to their competition. With that said, the 240mm version will be a more sensible pick in this case, and that can be applied generally for all other 240mm AIO models out there when we talk about putting them on on a mid-range level CPU. On the other hand, the 360mm version will deliver you slightly better performance, but more importantly it will let you lower down your fan speeds, thus the noise levels, while keeping the performance more or less the same. Of course, if you have a really TDP hungry CPU, every bit of performance always helps, so with having all of that in mind, you should make your pick according to your needs and hardware configuration. That's it for me for this time, thank you once again for watching, please take a second to toss me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content, that really helps a lot, and if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe, and if you already are, be sure to press that notification bell down below, so you don't miss out on a new video, and until then, Catch you later guys.